What is up guys and girls, this is Glenn, here again with another Rope Rage video. And I know, I know it's been a while since we've had this kind of interaction. It's been ages since I've been able to set up a camera and just speak to you guys. And that's mainly because I've been busy with a ton of stuff. However, there are a few tutorials in the works. In fact, the next video, yeah, the next video on this channel is gonna be a tutorial which has already been filmed just needs to be edited and all that stuff so look out for that of course make sure you're subscribed make sure you've got that notification bell turned on so you don't miss the video and yada 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 look out for more tutorials look out for seeing my face and hearing my voice a bit more um the main reason why i've done this intro is because we need a bit of background on what you're about to see a few months ago earlier in the year i met up with michael williams a martial arts coach. We've actually met up again recently and on this occasion we actually used some martial arts tools. Some of the ancient uh, martial artists would use very simple objects you could find. I don't have a bow staff so I just used a stick <laughs> uh, same dimensions the reason for me making this video is really so I can share some of the benefits I get from using martial arts tools as you know an add-on for my training of course as you know I do a lot of rope training but to get that little bit better and to get that little bit more expressive and creative with the techniques I try to include techniques of other tools. So I really wanted you guys to see the benefit of this and how a lot of techniques using the nunchucks and using the bow staff, they can translate to a lot of rope rage techniques that we practice using our jump ropes. And um, maybe this will help you guys out. But I find it really beneficial. I hope you will too. Let's crack into it. Listen to that. <laughs> All right, so the first thing we used was the nunchucks, which are a personal favorite of mine. Um, not only because they make you feel like a Bruce Lee ninja kick ass kind of character, but also because they're very beneficial for my jump rope training. If you look at a pair of nunchucks carefully, you'll soon realize that what you have is essentially a jump rope that's been cut in half through the cable. You have a handle in each hand, but the handles aren't connected by a rope. Okay, so what this allows you to do is to work the hands independently, which is super beneficial. Here's an example. Let's say you tend to trip over the rope a lot or the rope catches your foot quite a bit. And if you start to realize that it's catching your left foot a lot more than your right foot, that could be an indicator that your left hand isn't working on the same page as your right hand. And the good thing with this, with these nunchucks is I'm able to work the hands independently without the annoying aspect of tripping over the rope every five seconds. <laughs> the second beautiful thing about this is working both hands you are working both hemispheres of the brain. So it's a it's a mental training, a mental practice, as well as a physical practice. So we started off with these two-handed spins. Using the wrists, you're increasing your wrist mobility. You start spinning on the outside and then you spin on the inside also. So you really use that whole range of motion with the wrists. The key with doing these two-handed spins is to start out wide. And as you start out wide, you want to build confidence and build comfort doing these spins. And as you do develop your confidence, come in narrower, using less of the arms and more of the wrists. The reason why we start wide is to build confidence, but also so that you avoid clashing the nunchucks each time you bring the wrists inward. And as you build that confidence and that proficiency, you can come in narrower using less of your arms and more of your wrists. Second technique we did, um, forgive me for not knowing all the names, as I say, I'm not, I'm not a practitioner with, with any of these. 
martial arts tools but this is just a wrapping around the body with the hands and similar to the two-handed spins this is training the hands independently the difference here is that you're not spinning them at the same time so it's a bit tougher the two hands are doing slightly different movements Michael obviously demos first and then I went off took the lessons from our session and I worked on these things I practiced them um, as you can see here so really beneficial techniques these two so this last one here pertains more to jump rope training than the others. It's a double spin as you're bringing the nunchucks down and a double spin as you're bringing the nunchucks up. You have to have really quick and smooth wrist work to be able to do this. So Michael first demonstrated and I went off and trained on this as well. And those are just three nunchucks drills that I will do from time to time. It's really good if I'm feeling a little bit lazy because we all feel a bit lazy sometimes and I don't quite want to get the ropes out. I might just want to step outside and do a little bit of nunchucks training. It's almost like a meditative practice and it's really good to engage the brain, just train those neurons, making the mind body pathways a bit sharper. Next up, we moved on to the bow staff. Now the bow staff, I've only recently started using compared to the nunchucks. Um, but I found it very beneficial also because what it does is it exposes spatial awareness. Now, this is an aspect that I speak about a lot in my training sessions and trying to encourage people to think about when they're training, how much space you have inside the rope as well as outside the rope. So the first as aspect of spatial awareness is how much space you're providing yourself to move around in the rope how much room for error you're allowing yourself before that rope hits you or catches your foot or your arm, shoulder, whatever. If you're aware of how much space you have to work with inside your rope, you can keep going smoother for longer. So here, this swinging technique translates directly to the side swing. I'll provide a little overlay here um, and if you look carefully, you can see that the hand movements are very much the same. There are a couple tutorials on this specific technique. It's actually been pretty popular on this channel. It seems you guys like the side swings. Um, I'm going to put those tutorials in the top right hand corner, break down this technique from the ground up and we look at various different variations you can do of this technique. Pretty fun technique. I'm a, I'm a big fan and it's clear a bunch of you out there are as well. So the benefit of using the bow staff here is that you're able to work the arms to simulate the movement of the rope and you don't have to jump. You don't have to jump over anything. But if your hand movements are incorrect, that stick or the bow staff will hit you on the arm, sometimes on the head. So it's not completely a walk in the park. There is still some you know, some awareness you have to bring to your training and some focus, but it's really a beneficial way for developing your arm movements. And as for this one, this doesn't relate to jump rope training at all, really. I just think it's a really cool move that Michael pulled out of the bag here. So I went away and I had a play around with it as well and made sure I was able to do it. This actually took me quite some time to get. Now, the next technique is the one I had the most difficulty with. Um, and still do. So this involves using one hand to spin the bow staff, pass it behind the back and collect it with the other hands. I believe the reason why this was so difficult for me was that in my jump rope training, I'd very rarely pass the rope behind the back. It's more often than not, you've got the rope handles in each hand either side of you. Very rarely would you pass a handle from one hand into the other behind the back. But I think what this indicates is that there is a really cool technique, a really cool jump rope technique that we can make out of this. So, um, I don't know, feel free to have a go with that and send them in to me, I look forward to seeing it. I'll definitely, as always, be experimenting and trying to 
work out some new techniques that we can all try and we can all better ourselves with. So as you can see, this is me having my turn with it. And as is quite evident, there is more work required. Okay, so that's that for the martial arts tools. Um, of course, where I go, my ropes go. So we did some rope work as well, working on some double under stuff. The last time I met with Michael, he was barely able to do a double under. So he's clearly been working on it. And this is, you know, this is the benefit of practice. You just ha you have to put the time in and put the repetitions in and the payoffs will come. So I think we'll wrap up the video here. I know this is an unusual style of video for this channel, but I just thought I'd share with you guys something a bit new, something a bit different that could help you guys out if you feel interested to maybe someday try your hand at some martial arts tools and just to see how they benefit your training. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to check out this video. If there are any thoughts you have on the video, pop them down below. If there are any videos you want to see in the future, pop them down below. <laughs> if there's anything in this video that you feel, hmm, yeah, that's easy, I could do that. Pop it down below. I, long story short, I love to have a chat with you guys, so feel free to drop any comments down in the section below. I see all of them, I respond to all of them, and I look forward to chatting with you. In the next one, we're going to be looking at how to do the jump rope crossover backwards. How about that? Look out for it. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you've got the notification bell turned on so you don't miss it. On that note, all the best with your training and stay raging.